Hi, I'm Bruce Busby, President of Roots Magic, and in this short video, we're going to show you some of the great new functionality that we've added to the search capabilities in Roots Magic 11. Now, I'm not talking about just better ways to do the search, but also great new functionality with the actual results of that search. So let's just hop over here to the search page. Okay, and I'm good. first let's just quickly look at the basic search. Now, the search functionality itself has not really changed on the basic search. You just come in and type in, um, you know, a name or part of a name and tell it to find that, and it will give you it will give you those results. But here's where it's different. You're going to have a, a number of different new capabilities with these results instead of just being a list of results that you can look at and and uh, you know hop to the edit screen or go to them in the in a one of the people views you also have a couple of items here you have the ability to print the results and you also have the ability to customize the results so for example if I if I were to click on customize I can come in here and I can add whatever columns I want, I just add it to the view, and then I can rearrange what order those columns are in on, uh, on the results. Now, you've always been able to do this a little bit, but what you had to do was go to the people view and go into the people list and do this customize. And so when you did this customize from this view, it would add a column or remove a column or rearrange columns, whatever you did. It would do that with this view and the search results view. Well, in Roots Magic 11, these are now independent. So you can have one set of columns for your people list view and a completely different set of columns available for your search results. Another thing that's nice here is when you do a search, over here, you will be able to see how many matches there are. So, you you know, if you ever wanted to know how many and you didn't want to go through and ca count these rows, you don't have to anymore. It's going to show you exactly how many search results you have. Now, the print button, this is going to let you print the actual search results. So, if you've ever wanted to get a print out of that, you can. So you can print that and then you can, um, you know, send it to the printer. Now you'll notice that it's cutting off um, the, the, uh, some of those columns to the right. Now you have a couple of options. One, use less columns or two, um, you know, narrow, narrow the columns down a little bit if you want, or three, switch it over to landscape view. But the, the best part of this is not the ability to print it so much as it is to be able to save your printout. And this is a feature that a lot of people have wanted. I can now save this to Microsoft Excel. So if I tell it to go to Microsoft Excel and I come in here and I say, you know, this is my, you know, search results. I'll just call it sr.xl. And there we go. It just opened it up in Excel, and there are my search results. Okay, and it doesn't matter. In this case, it doesn't matter if that report is not able to display them in, you know, the printout. That's, that's, not, a, that's not a problem uh, when you export it to Excel, when you export it like this. Um, even, if it does, even if you've got more columns than will fit in the actual printout, they'll all still go to Excel perfectly fine. And so there you go. There's, there's how you can now get your search results into Excel or into a comma separated, into a comma separated file. The last thing, which you probably already noticed right here, is that in addition to the list, which you customize, Whenever you highlight a person, we have what's called the life, uh, life summary panel over here. And this is something that's also available on the main people view, but it's now available also right here within the, the search capabilities. So you're not limited to just the few columns of data that you can see. So when you highlight, when you highlight a person, um, you, can, you can now look at that person and you can see, 
let me expand this, I can expand this. I can see all of their events, whether or not they're in this, whether or not they're in this, uh, this column, uh, the columns here or not. I can also see how many spouses and children the person has, and I can see how many uh, sets of parents the person has, and I can see all the members of those families as well. So if I go down through here, you know, I can look and see all, all of this type of information. Now, when, in addition to being able to see that information, I can also come over here and if I want to add another child to this person's family, I just click on add a child and it will take me through adding a child to that family. I can also add another spouse to that person. Same type of thing with parents and siblings. I can add other siblings. I can rearrange the siblings. Up here, I would have been able to rearrange children. It doesn't show up because there was only one child. If there was more than one child, then you would also have rearranged children here as well. And I can also add another set of parents if I want. Okay, so in addition to basically being able to do almost anything that you could possibly think of doing with that person's families, you know, adding spouses, adding parents, adding children, rearranging spouses, rearranging children, you also have the ability to work directly with the family members themselves. Each one of these family members has a menu to the right side. And when you click, you can go to a person that's going to actually just jump to that person on that people view. You can edit the person that will open up their edit screen. That's, that's basically similar to this, except this edit button only edits this person. This is gonna let me edit anybody it's a family member. I can also unlink a family member from somebody or I can actually delete the person from the database. So I've got a bunch of functionality there, uh, being able to work and see much, much more information about my search results and to be able to actually do things with my search results than I could do in the past. Okay, now let's go ahead and move to the advanced search. The advanced search has all of those same things. It's going to have, uh, it's going to have the ability to customize the columns. It's going to have the, um, you know, the life summary as well. Uh, it's going to have all the ability to print or save the results to Excel, all of those as well. But let's go ahead and do find. And some of this is going to be very similar to what we had in, in Roots Magic 10. So in other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create rules in order to select people. So I'm going to say I want to add a rule and I want to add um, ancestors. I'm going to select ancestors and I'm going to sl I select a beginning person, whoever, whoever I want to start it. And then I have now marking the ancestors of this person, how many generations and you know, all the options you've had before. Okay, now I'm gonna add a second, I'm gonna add a second option and I'm going to pick event. Now, if you've been working with searching the advanced searches in previous versions of Roots Magic, we, we had a, a rule type called criteria, which was kind of a catch-all. It and and a lot of people were afraid to use criteria. It just seemed overly complicated, you know, because it it included searching for you know events and names and associations and um, you know and attributes and all kinds of things. Well, we've pulled those out separately, so. Um, you now have rules for individual attributes. That would be things like finding people based on their sex, their living flag, um, you know, color coding, age, all kinds of things. Family attributes, and you can see what those are. Event. Um, this is this lets you find people based on event uh, information, on the event type, uh, on the date, the place, details, description, the age names, association. So I'm going to go ahead and pick event. And so what I'm, the first thing I want to do is, do I want it to be combined, this new rule, do I want it to be and, or, or but not? That's new in Roots Magic 10 and all the previous versions. When you created your set of rules, it basically just did each rule. It, it marked or unmarked 
the first person group, then it marked or unmarked the second group, then it marked or unmarked the third group. And so it never took into account what people had already been selected, which people were already selected. So it was, it was really hard to do things like say, I want all the ancestors who were born in New York. That, that was really hard to do because it would basically mark all the ancestors and then it would mark everybody that was born in New York. Even if they weren't an ancestor, they still got selected if they were born in New York. And, and that's not what a lot of most people wanted. So now I can say I want to mark people that are ancestors of her and I want their birth place to contain New York. Okay? And and so basically if I click OK and I don't know if there's any oh there actually were. I just made that up so I'm actually glad that there were some. It actually shows me there's five matches and it marked ancestors, ten generations, direct line, and they had a birth place of New York. Now I'm gonna go back into here and I'm gonna look at the bring up this event. This this when you're marking a person based on events, there's another thing that's different between Roots Magic 11 and Roots Magic 10. That being that the person who matches with this event, it has to be a single event that has all of these. Okay. Back with the criteria thing, you know, you would say birthplace contains this and birth date is after that. Well, if they had two birth events and one matched the birth date criteria and the other matched the birth place criteria, that person would be selected even if they didn't have a single birth event that matched both criteria. Okay, in, in Roots Magic 11, this, these all have to. So if I were to say, you know, date, uh, date is after 1800, then the only people that are going to match this are going to be people who have a single birth event where the date is after that date and the place contains New York. Okay, and that goes for basically all of, all of the pieces of information here. Now another thing that's new that we've added in Roots Magic 11 is on dates, we now have an option called date is between. Okay, so you can say date is between 1800 and 1810. Okay, you no longer have to say date is after this date and birth date is before this date. You don't have to go through that anymore. Um, you, you basically can just say the date is between these two dates and the place contains New York. Okay, one last thing I'm going to mention right here um, is that by default, this will work similar to, you know, it'll find everybody whose birth has, who has a birth event that's between this date and that date and contains New York. It is not going to include any shared facts. But if I want to, I can say include shared facts. If I do this, when I do that search, I'm not only going to get the people who have a birth event with that match this, but I'm going to find anybody who shares a birth event that matches that criteria. Okay, it's, so I will get both the person who owns the birth and the people who share that birth. And then there's a third option, which is shared facts only. That's yet another thing. And what that's going to do is that's going to find only the people who share a birth event, who basically uh, have, have, have a birth event shared with them that matches this criteria. The person who actually owns that birth event will not be included in this particular search. So you can you can switch, you know, to whichever of those you want. You know, it'll if you use shared events a lot, it you know that you'll get a little bit different values uh, or search results depending on which one uh, which one you pick. And again, like I say, up here you can pick you can say and or or but not. So if you want to have all the ancestors, but you don't want to include people who match this particular birth, you can do that as well. Okay, 
Now, um, one last thing on this advanced search, uh, which is which is pretty cool, is this button right here, group. So if I create a search, you know, I can go in here and I can I can continue to tweak this search until I get it exactly what I want, and you know, basically run the search and then see the results. And then once I have exactly what I want, what I can do is I can come up here and say group. Roots Magic's going to ask me for the name for this new group. I'm going to I'm going to say Mary's ancestors from New York. I mean, I can call it whatever I want. Click OK. And now I have a new group. So if I go over here to people and I go into the groups, I have Mary's ancestors from New York. And you'll see um, that, that apparently there's 60 of them. I'm not sh sure why there were only five over there before. Um, but when I select that, I can refresh that. And when I go in and look at that edit group, I can see right there, I can set the rules. Oh, that's why it was different. I said the ancestors who were not who were not in New York. That's why that's why the number's higher. Okay. Um, so I can go in there and if I decide, oh, that's not what I meant. I wanted and. Click OK. Refresh the people. There we go. There's the five. And save it. And so now I have that group. And so it's it's a very easy way. It's a very easy way to create these rules-based groups without having to go and trial and error over and over and over, you know, from that from that group screen. You can come in here and you can, you know, go in here and you can tweak this as much as you want and do the search rules, get them exactly the way you want. And once you've done that, you can see the results so you know whether they're the correct results or not. And once you do that, you say, okay, now make a group out of that out of that search. And so it becomes a rules group where these set of rules uh, are the rules for that group and it automatically pre-marks, you know, pre-selects everybody that will be in that group. Uh, last thing I just want to show you, we did add on the search, we did add search and replace to the search screen. We just felt it belonged there. Um, we search used to be under a little button, a button over here and a menu. We took it out of there and it's right here so you can do this. Um, it does still have, Roots Magic 11 does still have the search and replace and all those other places that we used to keep it. Um, so like under people, um, you know, under tools, you have your search and replace and, and it's under the tools menu on, you know, on pretty much on all of these other, on all of these other pages. So it is still there, but we put it in here to kind of keep all of the search stuff uh, together. Anyways, I hope... I hope this has been useful to you. I hope you uh, enjoy getting to use this new functionality uh, of the, in the search capabilities in Roots Magic 11. And thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you again soon.